Hello, and welcome to the Israel of God, where our interpretation is expressly prohibited. My name is Brother Antoine, and reading for me today is Brother Vernon. The title to the, today's lesson is called Virtuous Woman. Now, this is a lesson in leadership, which we will illustrate to you what, when you're a virtuous woman, you are the help that is meet or good for man. Now, whether that man, whether that for your husband, now whether that husband is a man or that husband is Christ, if you're unmarried, this is a lecture, lesson that will teach you exactly who you're patterned after and what you have to be. So it's actually a second part of a three-part leadership series, which contains one man of the house, this lesson, Virtuous Woman, and the next one coming up is called Marriage Counseling. And so come along with me and come along for this ride and see if it's really good to be queen. So let's start this lesson off in 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. We're going to start with 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Go ahead, read, Vernon. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Uh -huh. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So we see that the ordinance that he delivered to them is not his own ordinances. They are of Christ, because he said, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Go ahead. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we see that that's Christ's order. That's, that is God's order that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of uh, Christ is God. So what, but what we're going to see is, so now that you have this position, what is this role going to be like? So let's uh, go skip down to verse 8. Go ahead. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Now you see that? For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man. So now you're seeing how your role is defined. The man is not for the woman, but the woman for the man. You are a help that is meet for him, and that, and neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman was created for the man. Keep going. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head mm -hmm. because of the angel. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Now you see that they fit together. They're like hand and glove. They fit together because it says... Uh, never the, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman or the woman without the man, because now that the woman has come out of man, now every man comes out of woman. So we fit together. We end this track together. We're going to see this whole thing is about teamwork. You just got to find your part to play. Nobody, the Lord is equal and fair with this whole thing. You just got to get your part in here. Okay, so where are we? Verse 12. Verse 12, go ahead. For as the woman is of the man, uh -huh. even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Now you see that? All things of God. So, But where did Paul get this from? Let's research the woman's origin. How did she come about? Let's start at Genesis 1. Let's start at Genesis 1. So when you first hear it, it kind of seemed like a hard pill to swallow. I got to be up under somebody. But let's see how you handle this. Everybody is up under somebody. That's why Paul set up the order in the first place. Paul said, hey, the man, man got to refer to Christ. Christ is even has to is under God. So we got to see everybody is uh, has an order. So let's go to Genesis one. We're going to start at verse 26. Genesis one and 26. Go ahead. And God said, mm -hmm. let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, mm -hmm. and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when God decided to make this man in his own image, he said, let him have dominion over all these things. So man has dominion, but let's keep reading. If it's just man with dominion, go ahead. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Did you catch that? 
Male and female, he created him, He created them. He created them male and female right there. So that woman was always inside a man. That's why he said, neither the woman without the man or the man without the woman. You are stuck together. You got to realize this. Once you see this, you'll see exactly what your role is. But where are we now? 28. 28. Let's go. Let's go to. Uh, no, I didn't read 28. Okay, go ahead. And God blessed them, mm -hmm. and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, mm -hmm. and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. You see that? So he gave them dominion, because he said he created male and female. This is a collective effort. Let's go to Genesis 5 and 2 real quick. Genesis 5 and 2, we're just going to read that quick verse, and then we're going to keep going. Genesis 5 and 2, go ahead. Male and female created he them, uh -huh. and blessed them, and called their name Adam. He did what? Called their name Called Adam. their name Adam. Adam named Eve Eve, but God called their name Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, uh, keep going. In the day when they were created. In the day that they were created. So you came in this thing together. You have to understand it, that you are in this together. Let's go to Genesis 2, and we're going to start at verse 16. Genesis 2 and verse 16. So right now, we're just looking at the origins, where, how this woman came. So, uh, so we see how togetherness is important. So, But now let's bring this woman out of man. Let's bring this woman forth. Genesis 2, 16. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, mm -hmm. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree mm -hmm. of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Uh huh. So you see, God said this to man. He said that the woman wasn't yet brought forth yet, but he made this statement clear to man, right? Go ahead. We're going we're gonna to circle back to this. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, mm -hmm. it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will help. I will make him and help meet for him. So God decided it was not good that you should be alone. So everybody thinking, oh, I, I could do this on my own. Hey, he said it was not good right. for you to be alone. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, he decided I'm going I'm to make you somebody well, for you. Go ahead. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought mm -hmm. them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Mm -hmm. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found in help meet for him. So you see that Adam was all by himself. He done, he done brought forth every animal. Everything. So dog is man's best friends, as we normally say, that's out of the question. Mm. So he done brought forth everything for man, and he's naming it and doing this. But the Lord still looked down and said, it's not good for man to be alone. He still said, he's alone. All right? Mm. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, uh -huh. and he slept. And he took one of the one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now wait a minute. You notice what he does? Why didn't he just like if you read further in the scripture, you say he has the residue of the spirit. He could have just took a whole separate ball of clay and made a different person. But no, she got to be closer to, than the skin on the back of your hand. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take her out of you. I'm gonna open you up and do some open surgery. Pull this thing out and make it with that so you'll know she's part of me. Mm -hmm. I can't. This is a together thing. She is part of me. Neither the man, like Paul stated, the woman is not without the man nor the right. man without the woman. Right. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man mm -hmm. made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You see that? He said it himself. She is bone of my bone and right. flesh of my flesh. She is part of me. So now, uh, as we're going to see, this role is starting to clear, clear up. She is part of him. You guys fit together. You guys got to work together. So you got to figure out what roles you have to play. Right. So let's keep going. Remember, he called their name Adam. And when he called their name Adam, he gave them dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over all the cattle he gave it to both of them yes go ahead 24 uh -huh. therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh uh -huh. and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed now i want you to check that so two things he said you got to leave father and mother and cleave to your wife so now the wife and you you all together now it's not mama and daddy you're not all mama and daddy's not all in the business or anything but also he says he said, and they both were naked, and they were not ashamed. Because right. you're going to see it's going to be times when you get naked, 
and you are ashamed now. But with this naked, there was no guilt. They were like children. You get two children that's naked, they don't know. They, they're not ashamed about it, right? So let's keep going. Let's see. It, it, but it doesn't still bear out about the man being over the woman, does it? It just says she was taken out of him. And the Lord called their name Adam. So where did Paul get this from? Let's go to Genesis 3. Uh, go right on here. Genesis 3 and 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, mm -hmm. Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So Adam told her, because remember, she was not out of that rib right. when he got that message. Mm -hmm. So Adam did his job and said, Here's what God has commanded us to do. Don't eat, of, don't, don't eat of this tree unless you're going to die. She said, don't even touch it. So Adam probably added that to it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Mm -hmm. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So you see how the serpent slid in right that, with that lie? We're going to see he's going to show up again. He keeps showing up with this man and woman because he wants to break that down. So when you're a woman, you got to make sure that you are not allowing that to happen within you. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto mm -hmm. her husband with her, and he did eat. Now you check that out. So by the time she uh, uh, talked to, uh, to, to the serpent, she was without Adam. Mm -hmm. Right. So they wasn't in that together. She decided on her own. Hey, I'm going to do this thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he decided to listen. Right. OK. So keep going. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Now their eyes open. They knew that they see. Now this nakedness coming with guilt. This coming with shame now. But at first, their nakedness didn't. They were not ashamed, right? Mm -hmm. But now, when this nakedness comes, that's that you know, with nakedness with sin will get you shame. Keep going. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves mm -hmm. aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. What? I was afraid because I was naked. Now that shame is set in because they have done something wrong. He, he, he did something that he shouldn't have done, and he knew about it because he already told the woman. But if it was okay what the serpent was saying, why, did, why didn't they just stand up and say, hey, God, hey, you, you was wrong. Mm -hmm. But when the, when the man in the house stepped in, all of a sudden that shame kicked in because they knew they had done something wrong. So now with that sin comes nakedness. This the, the shame with nakedness at first. It was, so we're going to keep seeing that that thing will run its way through. Keep going. I was afraid because I was naked uh -huh. and I hid myself. Uh -huh. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Uh -huh. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now you see that? Now first Satan said, he said, uh, hey, uh, Thou shouldn't surely die if you right. do this. He came real slick and slim, boy, just like Iceberg Slim. Hey, yeah, you shouldn't surely die. Mm -hmm. So if you wasn't going to die, why are you hiding now? Mm -hmm. Why are you ashamed now? You see, to, if you see this, you, you, Adam was not there with her. She brought this to Adam. Right. We got to see how the, this is what happened to your role. Now you're in this new predicament because Eve done this. You're going to see what you have to do now keep going 12 mm -hmm. and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree and i did eat now he ducked it he supposed that stood up but he didn't lie but he ducked it right mm -hmm. he didn't lie though he said i listened to the wife that you gave me this woman you gave me she gave me of the tree and I, and I ate keep going and the lord god said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. She ducked too. Hey, it ain't my fault. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat, right? Everybody's ducking responsibility here. But the Lord set them up to have dominion. How you going to have dominion if you ducking responsibility? Right. It don't coincide. So now the Lord is going to make, going to set sentence because of it. Let's go to verse 16. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Ding, there it is. Now that 
That's what Paul got it from. That's why the husband is over the wife. Because of this, he said, now the sentence is passed. Both of you all had dominion at first. You could have kind of ran it together equally, but now he's over you because you brought the wrong counsel. You got to remember the really you are help that's good for him. You're supposed to assist him. You're supposed to bring him the right counsel, but Eve brought him the wrong counsel and he hearkened unto it. Right. Let's keep going. Go ahead. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you did what, Adam? Listen Hearken to, to the voice of your wife. Should you not listen to the wife? Is that what the Lord said? No. He just saying you hearken to the wrong counsel. You should have been wise. Even though she counseled you, you're supposed to be wise and know which one to take. So because you decide to accept the persons of the wicked because she was bringing you wicked counsel. Here's what the sentence go. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So, so now we know how she got this role. So let's find out now that she got this role, what should she be doing in this role, right? Mm -hmm. So although she has objection to her own husband, we got to know what's her place. So how should she handle this? So we need to find a model. See, when we did the man of the house, we had a model. We had Moses as a man. Then we had Jesus. So the woman got to have a model too. The Lord will not leave her forsaken so let's go find out what this looked like let's go to uh first first peter three is that where first mm -hmm. peter three go ahead first peter three and one first peter three and one go ahead likewise ye wives, uh -huh. be in subjection to your own husband uh -huh. that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives so we just you see that he said if any obey not the word so say you got a uh, a wife uh, that's obeying the word and a husband that don't. If any obey not the word, let let them, uh, they can hear it from, the, they might be able to hear it from their wives because the wife's job is to bring that counsel. That's what Eve should have done, brought wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Now you see that? He said, what does the word chaste mean? Mm -hmm. It means pure virgin unadulterated mm -hmm. so while they behold this chase come you supposed to have chase conversation you supposed to be spiritually chase you supposed to have a conversation and it's supposed to be they beholding it coupled with fear so they supposed to be listening to what you got to say this is your job to give me that information right yeah. keep going verse three go ahead who's adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair uh -huh. and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel uh -huh. but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Now you see that? Let it not be that outward adornment. Because we're going to see an example here. Because we got two kind of women going on here. He said, let it not be. A, let your adornment. Don't be worried about, oh, I got this. Oh, I'm going to put this weave in. Oh, I'm going to do this. I got to do all that. No. He's saying, let it be the inner adornment of a humble and meek and quiet spirit. Because it's going to take strength for this. It's going to take, just like it took for man, that serotonin to make him go out and run through a burning building. It's going to take some another kind of thing that they normally call oxytocin was going to make her humble herself and give of herself to do this job because and she can't be afraid to do it where are we in the middle of uh, four in the middle of four go ahead even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit uh -huh. which is in the sight of god of great price because uh -huh. you're going to see that it's another kind of woman out here that's worried about the outward adorning Okay, so I want you to pay attention to that. There's going to be some key points. The woman that's worried about the outward adorning and the woman that's worried about the inner adorning. Go ahead. Five. Go well, ahead. After this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God mm -hmm. adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. You see that? So the holy women of God, when uh, trusted in God, they were in subjection to their own husbands, right? So if you're going to follow this holy woman, this is what you're going to have to do. But what is this going to mean for you? Go ahead. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Uh-oh, we got us a model. We just found us a model. Just like you, we had Moses to model for the man. We could model Sarah for the, for the wives. So let's find out what she does. Keep going. Whose daughters ye are. Whose daughters ye are. So you got to find out, are you going to be a daughter of Sarah or a daughter of this other woman? Go ahead. As long as ye do well uh -huh. and are not afraid with any amazement. And not what? Not afraid. Not afraid. So you cannot be afraid to be in subjection to your own husband. You cannot afra be afraid to give your husband wise counsel. Mm. 
You can't be afraid. So you got to be, it, it said right here, that who trusted in God. So you're going to have to trust in God and get wise counsel and bring that to your husband. Don't do what Eve did. Right. Except the person's a wicked and bring that counsel to your husband. You got to bring some wise counsel. Go ahead. Likewise, ye husbands uh -huh. dwell with them according to knowledge, uh -huh. giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So now she's the weaker vessel. But as a husband, we're going to have some tidbits in here for you, too. Just as we did in man of the house. Hey, you got to give honor to her. If she's doing and trusting in God and being wise, you give her honor and you give her the, uh, the work of her hands. Go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Check that word, heirs. That's going to pay attention because your, your model, Sarah, she understood heirs. You're going to see her. So pay attention to that word, heirs, being heirs together in salvation. What do you be heir to? Heir to the throne. Heir to, you, when you are heir, you heir to something great. So we're going to see. Let's go to um, uh, Genesis 16. Genesis 16. 16 and 1. Genesis 16 and 1. When you get it, go ahead. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, mm -hmm. bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Uh -huh. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. So Sarai and Abraham come up with this. Uh, Sarai come up with this thing, gave some counsel. Hey, I, I'm 90 something years old. I'm not having no children. You going unto my handmaid. And Abraham didn't. He, okay. He took, he hearkened unto the counsel. What can he do? Right? That's, that's what he's supposed to do. All right. I'll do it. Go ahead. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Right? He hearkened to the voice of Sarai. The Lord didn't come and say, Abraham, you shouldn't have did that. So go ahead. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, mm -hmm. after Abram had dealt, dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. So let me say this with a caveat, just for you, bro you, you brothers out here that think you can have multiple wives. In this country, you're only allowed one wife, right? Because you only could get... Uh, tax deductions for one person okay so any other person outside of that one wife is not your wife she can't be she's not allowed to be right there's no there's a law against polygamy here so there is no one wife that's a wife and some extra that's whoredom on the side okay so let's get that straight right now keep going and he went in unto hagar mm -hmm. and she conceived and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. So now Hagar started thinking, well, I'm the one got the baby, so, hey, forget Sarah. Go ahead. And, Sar and Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Now look what Sarai did. She came to Abram and said, she didn't duck the, she said, my wrong. My wrong be upon you, Abraham, because still, because Abraham, you're making the ultimate decision. But he, she still took responsibility that it was her wrong. And she said, my wrong be upon thee and let God judge between me and you. Right. And let's see what Abraham says. Go ahead. But Abram said unto Sarai, behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Now you see how Abraham did that? Hey, she's in your, he gave her the work of her hands. Now, it was uh, on a situation when you're dealing with a bond man and free, a bond woman and free woman, but he gave her the work of her hands. Hey, that's your handmaid. So sometimes, brothers, you got to do that with your wife. Hey, this is your thing. This is how you want to do it. Then do it that way. Okay? So now, but let's, let's look at this progression. Where are we? Verse 7. Okay, go ahead. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, mm -hmm. by the fountain in the way to Shur. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? Mm -hmm. And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hand. You see that? Even God agreed with it. Go return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hands. He given her, Abraham already gave her the work of hands. The Lord is okay with it. You go return there and do what you're supposed to do. But let's skip down. Let's go to Genesis 17. We're going to read 15 and 16 because now something is about to change. So why, I want you to pay attention to this model. Something is about to change. Genesis 17, we're going to start at verse 15. And at this time, Sarai is about 90, okay? And Abraham is about 99 or 100, all right? Mm -hmm. So the, they are well stricken in years. Go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, mm -hmm. as for Sarai thy wife, 
Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Okay, so she, he, the Lord just gave her a name change. He just gave her a new identity mm -hmm. because Sarah means princess or noble woman like a queen okay so now this is gonna give her a new mind state right keep going and i will bless her and uh -huh. give thee a son also of her uh -huh. yea i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of people shall be of her see what's coming out of her she's a queen kings of people is coming out of her right and he said i'm gonna bless her and she's gonna be a mother of many nations now remember she's 90 and sarah and, and abraham thinking man hey hey so you imagine what she was thinking with this brown woman thinking that she the stuff she probably young and all that and you 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 gonna sit up here and talk about me sarah wasn't sarai wasn't having but let's see what sarah does right let's go to genesis 21 we're going to start with verse 1, Genesis 21 and verse 1. Go ahead. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, mm -hmm. and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Mm -hmm. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Mm -hmm. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Okay. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded. So Abraham didn't miss a beat. So he's another model for us, too. He, he was on top of everything God told him, right? Mm -hmm. So Abraham was in the stead, uh, acting as, 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 as a man of the house like he should, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see how Sarah is right now. Keep going. And Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born. You see that? Him. So they were well stricken in years. They, they were not young people at this time. That was the great miracle about it, that they had this child and and they were 190 years old go ahead and sarah said god hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with uh -huh. me. and she said who would have said unto abraham that sarah should have given children suck uh -huh. for i have borne him a son in his old age so nobody thought that she would ever give abraham a son especially after all this time right so like she said god sarah actually laughed when god came with this so now she said hey god then made me to laugh and everybody laughing with me now because i'm born abraham a son in his old age but let's keep remember she's not sarah anymore go ahead and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. Uh -huh. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. So you see that? So now, some, some time passing, now Ishmael is mocking Isaac, right? Mm. Huh, you're not going to do that in my house. Go ahead. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, uh -huh. Cast out this bondwoman and her son, uh -huh. for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Whoa, there's that word again. See, she's a queen now. Mm. She knows what this got to do with. She said, no, I'm not going to have no son in here mocking or no people in here mocking. You got to cast out that bond woman, Abraham. And she didn't go tell Abraham, you better cast that out. I'm None of that. She just came and gave him some counsel. Look, you got to cast out that bond woman and I'm not going to have him heir with my son. Because remember, the Lord just told her, queen, kings of people going to come out of you. Right. You are mother of nations. You going to have heirs. This is not just about this one little incident right here. This is about the nation. This is going to save the, the whole world. Mm. I'm a queen that's having a baby, and this guy's got to be the heir. Go ahead. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. So Abraham still loved Ishmael. He was grieved in his sight because of it. But let's look what the Lord. Let's look at the Lord way in. Go ahead. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bond, thy bondwoman. Mm -hmm. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, mm -hmm. hearken unto her voice. Do what? Listen. Hearken unto her voice. See, it was different. She brought him different counsel than Eve brought Adam. Mm -hmm. She brought him wise counsel. Hey, I, kn I know what the Lord said to me. I remember. I, hey, I'm a mother of nations. Kings going to come out of me. I can't have somebody in here mocking. I got to have some, uh, this, got, this house got to be run a certain way if I'm going to do this job. You see how our role is? You guys seeing your role come through? Go ahead. For an Isaac shall thy seed be you called. You see that? For an Isaac shall thy seed be called. You got to remember, when he did this to Eve, it slew the whole nation. By Sarah standing up and doing this for Isaac, it saved the whole world. It slew the whole world when Eve did it. Now Sarah just stood up and did the right thing and just saved the whole world. Because God just told him, through Isaac shall your seed be called. Go ahead. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation 
because he is thy seed. So because he's your seed, Abraham, I'm still going to take care of him. But by Isaac is your seed called. Let's go, um, let's go to Genesis 4. Galatians. I mean Galatians 4. Galatians 4. So he told, he said the whole world, he, because she stood up, the whole world going to gain access to eternal life by her standing up, unlike when Eve sat down and went on and accept the person of the wicked, the whole world lost access to, the, to eternal life. So I want you guys to see where your role is so you'll know, hey, how to make this thing work. Let's go to Galatians 4. We're going to see how Paul breaks this down. Galatians 4, we're going to start at 21. Galatians 4 and 21. Go ahead. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, mm -hmm. do you not hear the law? Mm -hmm. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, mm -hmm. the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Okay, now check this out. So this law he's talking about is a sacrificial law. How do you know he's talking about the sacrificial law? Because the other law was already here. We're going to see. Keep reading, Vern. For, I'm sorry. But he who was of the bondwoman uh -huh. was born after the flesh. Uh -huh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Uh -huh. Which things are an allegory. For these are the for these are the two covenants. Oh, so he, uh, allegory mean a symbol. So these things, this thing what you saw with Abraham's two sons, one by the bond woman and one by the free woman, this is symbolizing the two different covenants. Right. Right. Keep going. The one from the Mount Sinai, uh -huh. which gendered to bondage, which is Hagar. All right. So Hagar represents what happened on Sinai. Not the Ten Commandments, but the sacrificial law and the Levitical priest and all that stuff that came with that. That's what that represents. Because you got to think, when he said to them, he said, uh, tell me, you, do you desire to be under the law? He's talking about the sacrificial law. How do you know? Because with the moral law was already there. The moral law was there with Abraham. When Abraham, when that guy took Abraham's wife, the Lord came and checked him about it and said, hey, you're going, you're going, you're about to be killed this night. So the uh, committing adultery, not a committing adultery was already there. But now he's saying, hey, this other thing that came, that added to it, this is what this represents. You either going to be part of this new covenant which you don't have to do the sacrifices and you got to come under the blood of Jesus or you're going to be part of the old covenant. That's what these two sons represent. Why you think she was talking air? Go ahead. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia uh -huh. and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, mm -hmm. and is in bondage with her children. Uh -huh. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free which is the mother of us all. Which is the mother of us all. So this is what she was representing. That's why she said, he can't be heir with my son because I'm representing this mother under this new, this church under this new covenant under the blood of Jesus. And he can't be heir with me. So when you see yourself in this light to know what you truly represent, that being a woman, you are representing the, uh, the uh, wife of Christ. You're going to see this. Keep going. For it is written, uh -huh. Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Uh -huh. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not. Uh -huh. for, the for the desolate hath many more children than she with has an husband. So the desolate, they gonna have, they have all the, like Jesus said, any ye in at the straight gate. It's going to be many more people than this children, this married wife. Go ahead. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Uh -huh. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. So he got to see what you represent. He said, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We're supposed to be about, the ch this church is supposed to be about the word of God. We're supposed to be about keeping the commandments. We're supposed to be about coming under this blood of Jesus. This is the children of promise. But he said here, but as then the, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was of the spirit. So just like I, just like Ishmael was that day persecuting Isaac, teasing him. That's what this world is doing to the church of God. You're going to see this. Keep going. So you, now you're seeing who you represent. This woman represent the Lord's wife. And if we're going to be part of her, we got to make the same representation. Go ahead. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Mm -hmm. Cast out the bondwoman and her son, mm -hmm. for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. You see that? So you see what, what uh, Sarah saw some. Sarah could see this thing to the end. Keep going. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So now we got to see which children we are about. If you're supposed to be children of the free woman, let's see if you're going to follow the children of the free woman. Let's go to Isaiah 54. We're going to read verse 1, then we're going to read 4 through 8. 
So let's look. We're going to look at this woman that the love, the, what the Lord loves so much. R remember this queen, she bore the, the uh, uh, heir that redeemed us all. So let's look at, at her in the, in the form of a nation because that's what she represents. When you as the woman, as the counselor, you also represent the nation of Israel or the nation, the church of God. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Go ahead. And one. Sing, O barren, mm -hmm. thou that didst not bear, mm -hmm. break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with mm -hmm. child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. You see that? So it's more of them. It's more people out here doing all this other stuff than it is of this church, of the ones that follow him. Remember, any in at the straight gate. So it's more of them, right? So he said, it's more of the children of the desolate than the ones of the married wife. Let's go to verse 4. Go ahead. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, uh -huh. neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. Uh -huh. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. So he said, hey, fear not. Remember, like he told him, don't fear to be a subjection to your own husband. Fear not and don't and remember not thy shame. So for people who have done all these other things and they're concerned about, it, hey, you come start walking in this thing and you come part of this woman, this the Lord's wife. He's saying, Fear not, remember not thy shame, and come on and do this thing right, and follow me and be a part of this thing, be a part of this church. Go ahead, and let's, let's read verse 5. What does it say? For thy maker is thine husband. Who's your husband? Thy maker. Thy maker is your husband. So if you understand that how you got to be in subjection to your own husband, it's the same way that the church got to be in subjection to Christ. He said, thy maker is your husband. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is his name. Uh -huh. And thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel, uh -huh. the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. So the God of the whole earth shall he be called. That's why he said, hey, you got to cast out that bond woman. You got to put that other stuff aside. You got to be walking in this thing go ahead for the lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken uh -huh. and grieved in spirit uh -huh. and a wife of youth when thou was refused saith thy god uh -huh. for a small moment have i forsaken thee but with great mercies will i gather thee so for a small moment the lord forsaken this woman we're gonna see that's why he's telling telling her hey because this woman did wickedly she stopped following after that other stuff and he, she started leaving him. You're going to see for a small moment the Lord had to forsake her. We're going to go into that. Keep going. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee uh -huh. for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. So for a little while, he left his wife. He left his wife because she went and followed after somebody else. Right. So for a little while, that maker, that's your husband, he left you. So we're going to go and follow this story because you got to make sure you don't do this same thing when it's coming into your life and when it's coming into following God. Let's keep going. Keep going. Go ahead. Okay, we have verse eight. OK, let's go to uh, Song of Songs. Now, uh, check. Uh, people call it Songs of Solomon, but they really the song of songs. So there's no song greater because you're going to realize this is a duet between God and and his people between God and his wife. We're going to see how they're going to go back and forth in this song. Let's go to Song of Songs. Let me get there. Song of Songs, we're going to start at chapter 6. Chapter 6, Songs of Songs, 6 and 1. Song of Songs, 6 and 1. Go ahead. Whither is thy beloved gone? O oh, thou fairest among women, uh -huh. whither is thy beloved turned aside, uh -huh. that we may seek him with thee? So they said, hey, uh, um, where is your beloved gone? They asked the woman, where's your beloved, where's your husband at, right? The one you love so much. Go ahead. My beloved is gone down into his garden, uh -huh. to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lily. Right. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the living. So you see what she said? She said, hey, I'm my beloved, my beloved, my... So the first start of song, somebody say, or probably the, the, the whoever's doing the male part of do it, where's your beloved gone, right? She come on in and say, hey, uh, my beloved has gone down, get some spices, and I'm my beloved, and he is mine, right? Go ahead. Thou art beautiful, O my love, uh -huh. as Tirzah, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Uh -huh. Turn away thine eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. So, so the uh, man come in and say, hey, you are beautiful, my love, and calmly as Jerusalem. And she come back and say, oh, turn away your eyes from me, right? They having this whole little love song and duet going. All right, go to verse 8. Go ahead. 
There are three score queens and four score concubines and virgins without number. Oh, uh, so you got you got 60 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number, right? Go ahead. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. Uh-huh. She is the only one of her mother. Uh-huh. She is the choice one of her that bears uh-huh. her. The daughters saw her and blessed her. Yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Now you see that? She said, you got all these queens and all these concubines, but she, but one. She undefiled. That's that chaste. Like she said, that chaste virgin or that uh, uh, that chaste conversation, she's the only one. I love her. He said, my dove, my undefiled is but one. He said, the daughter saw her, and they all blessed her. This is what Sarah was representing. That's what she represents. Hey, this, uh, this, uh, this undefiled and uh, this undefiled church. That's what you gotta be like. This is what your role is, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, "Hey, my beloved is but one, uh, and they all the queens and all the concubines came by and praised her. That's what type of woman you gotta be. And we gonna see just. So let's look at just how to be that, right? Let's, uh, let's go to uh, Matthew twenty-five. Let's look at this virgin. Jesus is going to give you a representation of her again. Let's look at Matthew 25. Matthew 25. We're going to start at verse 1. 25 and 1. Go ahead. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, Mm -hmm. which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now you see that? So now you got it. There's those two women again. You got the, there's the born woman and the free woman. You got the five wise and the five foolish, right? Mm -hmm. So you got these two, uh, two type of women. Which one you going to follow? Go ahead. Which one you going to find yourself in? Go ahead. But the wise took oil in their vessels uh-huh. with their lamp. Uh-huh. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So in the midnight there was a cry made, Hey, the bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him, right? Go ahead. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Uh-huh. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Oh, so now they're going to try to, the foolish going to try to hustle the wise women. Give us some of your oil, because we didn't bring enough. Ours gone out. But see, these women wise, they're going to stand up for what's right. They're not going to do what Eve did and accept the person of the wicked. They're going to do what Sarah did and say, cast out that bond woman. This is a virtuous woman. Go ahead and see what they said. Go ahead. But the wise answered, saying, uh-huh. not so lest there be not enough for us uh-huh. and you. Uh-huh. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Hey, you go take care of that business yourself. Don't put that in with me, what I got to do. I got to be about my husband because mm. my husband is my maker, mm. right? They represent the church just like Sarah did. Yeah. Hey, I got to be about his business. I can't be. So when you wives, you thinking about something that your husband and your family is set to do, but you want to go off because your girlfriend unsaid, let's do this. Uh-uh, you better be careful who you're following. You might be following these foolish women. Because he said, these women say, uh-uh, you go out and take care of your own business. I got to take care of my business. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, mm-hmm. and they that were ready went, went, went in with him to the marriage. Uh-huh. And the door was shut. You see that? Hey, they went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Go ahead. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord. Open to us. That's all the same people that are saying, Lord, haven't we done this in your name? Haven't we done that in your name? Remember, he said, as many children of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the woman without a husband, mm. the children of the married wife are few. Mm. So they stay all knocking on the door now. Hey, come, let us, let us in. Let us in. Go ahead. Watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour where... Twelve. Yeah. He said, but, I, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I never knew you. Depart from me, that work of iniquity. So if you're going to be a foolish wife, this is what the Lord got to say for you. I don't know you. Go ahead. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You got to always be watching and circumspect. See, when you're a, a wife, you're going to give wise counsel. You got to know how to diagnose before you prescribe. You got to know how to give wise counsel. You got to be able to say, hey, watch, be circumspect, pay attention. So when you come to your husband, you come with some real information. You're not coming with foolish information. you like Eve did. You're coming with wise information like Sarah did. Let's go to Ephesians 5. 
Ephesians 5 and verse 14. When you get it, go, go ahead, Vern. Wherefore, wherefore he said, uh -huh. Awake thou that sleepest, uh -huh. and arise from the dead. Uh, so you, you see that again? He, like they was in the middle of the night, just like them virgins in the middle of the night. He said, Awake you that sleepest, arise from the dead. It's time to pay attention. Go ahead. And Christ shall give thee light. Uh -huh. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You see that? Not as fools, but as wise. Don't be like the foolish virgins. Be like the wise virgins. Don't do what Eve did. Do what Sarah did. Don't be like the bond woman. Be like the free woman. You see him? Let's go. Keep going. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh huh. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So don't be unwise, don't, uh, but be understanding what the will of the Lord is. Remember he said, the ones that fear God, the, the sisters who love God, they the ones that now your husband can hearken unto you because you understand what the will of the Lord is. So if Eve understood what the will of the Lord is, what she showed that she did, why didn't she pay attention to it? We wouldn't be dying a day, right? Keep going. Skip down to 21. Skip down to 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Uh -huh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. I didn't, I didn't write this. It says submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord. But now you know how to do it. Now you know what to do. You see, Sarah still was submitting herself when she said, hey, you got to cast out that bond woman. She still didn't, she didn't say, you better cast out that bond woman. It wasn't no room for that. She still was, you cast out that bond woman. Like she told him before, hey, my sin is upon you. So she knew the ramification of what she does, it affects Abraham. That's a, a wise woman. That's how you know. You know what the will of the Lord is. So you say, so now you can submit yourself to your own husband because you know how to provide counsel. You know how to diagnose and you know how to still stay submissive when you do it. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife, uh -huh. even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. This is what we've been reading about all night, all this whole uh, 40 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. That the husband's the head of the wife, and this is comparing to Christ to the church. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In some things. Everything. Everything. Right. So this is not a thing for men to get pompous or women to take low because now we got some information on how to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You still got to know what role you play because you guys are still stuck together. You got to do this thing as a team. But now we got a role because of what happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for it, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That sound like chase, don't it? Mm. That, that's what he said, that chase conversation. Uh, remember he said, my love, my undefiled. Yes. That's what he's talking about, this clean woman, clean mind, spiritually chaste. So whatever you did in the past, he told them when I read that in, we read that in Isaiah, hey, forget that stuff. Right. Come to me with this clean mind. That way you can come to your husband with a clean mind. And if you are unmarried, Christ is your husband, and you can continue to go to him with a clean mind. Go ahead. Skip down to 31. Skip to 31. Go ahead. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And we read that in Genesis. That's all he's doing is quoting it, but go ahead. This is a great mystery, uh -huh. but I speak concerning Christ and the church. But hey. Paul summed it up, right? Because that's what we've been speaking about all day long concerning Christ and the church. You, when you, Now you know your title. You represent the church of God. So when now you know your, what your role is as a virtuous woman, you represent the church of God. Would the church of God tell, his, tell her husband, you're going to get out of here? Church of God can't do that. Right. So as a wife, you got to know what you, you the church of God bring her husband uh, situations. Hey, Lord. Uh, we need this or we need that. That's right. okay. That's coming humble. And you give it information. Hey, this happened. What shall we do? Like they did when they didn't know what to do with the man that uh, picked up sticks on the Sabbath day. They came with information to the Lord, right? Here's what went down. But let's go to Proverbs 31 and pick up this virtuous woman. Proverbs 31, verse 10. When you get it, go ahead. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Uh -huh. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. 
so that he shall have no need of spoil. Now check this out. So this mother was telling this to this king about this virtuous woman mm -hmm. and tell her, hey, who can find? This is a search just like you find any good thing, any ruby or whatever. You got to search hard for it, right? Mm -hmm. So people who thinking that finding a virtuous woman e is easy, it's not easy. They don't come always like that. You guys working in this thing together. So just so you know, when you're trying to look for a man at a house and he trying to look for a virtuous woman, they, you don't always start that way. You got to... Adam and Eve, you came together, so you got to get there together. Go ahead. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Uh -huh. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. Uh -huh. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. Now, you see how you see what this verse, you see these qualities that she have? Um, what, where you, where are you? Skip down to verse 15. Skip to verse 15. Go ahead. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. So she makes sure that her people got what they need. Right. So because she said, hey, uh, she her heart, his heart is safely trusting her. So she's not clothed with the platinum of hair and all that. She clothed with that honor. Like right. he said, she, that's what she clothed with. She's not worried about that. Not saying you don't go out and you don't look good. Just saying, hey, you what you really got to be clothed with and let the other clothes shine forth. First be clothed in here. Then all the other stuff will show up. Go ahead. She considereth the field and uh, buyeth it. Uh -huh. With the fruit of her hands, she planted the vineyard. Then he said her husband give her the fruit of her, her hands. Right. The, so she could consider a field. Hey, you know what? Because she wise in this situation. She don't delve herself. She's not, uh, she's not used to. She's wise in this situation. I know about planting vineyards and all that. Hey, baby, we should buy this field. And then she considered and buy. Go ahead. She girdeth her loins with strength uh -huh. and strengthened her arms. Go ahead. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. You check that? The candle don't go out by night. Remember those foolish virgins? What happened right. to that candle, Vern? It went out. It went out. And what the wise virgins say, uh-uh, you're not getting mine. Because right. she got to know, hey, I'm representing the church of Christ. My candle cannot go out. That light cannot go out. Right. That spiritual chasteness cannot go out. You don't have time. I don't, even if you're on your cycle or whatever, it can never leave. Mm -hmm. You can't make an excuse for it. It cannot go out by night. Keep going. Skip down to 20. Yeah, skip to 20. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. You see that? She's work. She's paying attention. Remember he said, walk circumspectly. Pay attention. So she see the poor and she say, hey, we could do something about this. Right. You got a wife like that? Hey, you got you a virtuous woman. Or maybe we got to keep going. Go ahead. Skip down 23. 23, go ahead. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. So when you're, if you're that good, people, the people going to know about your man at the house. Because you're not going to ever do nothing to make him look bad. He going to always look good. Like they going to say, man, that's that brother with that good wife. He must be so-and-so, so-and-so. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to, uh, skip to 25. Go ahead. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. The platinum of the hair of her is her clothing. No. Strength Makeup is her clothing. Mm -mm. The strength and honor is her clothing. That other stuff is secondary. Right. Go ahead. She opened her mouth with wisdom, uh -huh. and in her tongue is the law of kindness. You see that? Go ahead. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idols. So she's not sitting around idly by paying, just letting stuff like they used to show on this show where the lady used to sit home every day just eating bonbons. Mm -hmm. She's not doing that. She is, she don't eat the bread of idols. She's paying attention to what's going on, and she's making stuff, making sure her household is safe. Go ahead. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Uh -huh. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Mm -hmm. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Didn't that what Jesus said about his wife? Mm -hmm. He said, you un unadulterated, un undefiled, all the queens, there's 60 queens and 80 concubines, and all the virgins of the world, it's only one you. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's the type of woman you got to be. It's only one you. This is your role. This you can do this if you don't if you don't fear and you serve God. You can do this. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. You see it? A woman that feareth the Lord. That's the key. That's how you become spiritually chaste. You fear the Lord and you follow Him. And that's now you can provide wise counsel. Now your husband might do some about to do some crazy. You can say, Hey, baby, uh, I don't think we should do that. I don't think we should go by that car. We only making five dollars a month, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we shouldn't do it. Now it's up to him to listen or not. But th you did your part. You didn't listen to me. No, it wasn't no place for that. She, hey, her, she, her strength is in strength and honor is the fear of the Lord. You put her in a situation. She did her, what she was supposed to do. Keep going. Thirty-one. 
Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. Give her the fruit of her hands. That's exactly what Abraham did. Hey, she's yours. Do what you will. This is the same story over and over. So now uh, let's go to Revelation 17. So let's look at who you are following, right? With the, when you want to be clothed with that outward apparel, right? And, uh, and or you're going to follow the one that's going to have the fear of the Lord. We're going to see these two women are about to meet. They're about to meet, and it's going to be a showdown. Revelation 17 and 1. Go ahead. And there came one of the seven angels, which has the seven vials, and mm. talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That's the bond woman now, in a sense. That's representing that other woman. So you got two women you can follow. You got two examples. You can follow this one, or you can follow the free woman. You can follow the one that's... Fear in the Lord. Go ahead. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh -huh. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Keep going. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, mm -hmm. having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Sound like the outward adorning. Mm -hmm. Don't sound like that inward adorning that the other woman had, right? So she's adorned with the precious gold. and the, So she's worried about the outward stuff instead of worried about the poor and taking care of her husband and taking care of the household like she should. She's worried about this outward stuff. So when you're worried about the outward adorning, this is who you're following. Go ahead. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots. The mother of what? Harlots. The mother of harlots. The mother of whores. Go ahead. And abominations of the earth. Uh huh. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now you see that? She's full of the blood of the saints. So you know she's not keeping the commandments because she's killing the people that's bringing the commandments. So it's just the same way how like by accepting the person of the wicked, how they killed the whole world. When this woman did this, she killing the, the saints. But when you stand up like Sarah and accept the persons of the righteous, you and have that inner adorning, you become this virtuous woman and you could save the whole creation just like Sarah did. I thank you for your time.